Sort of know your breath all the way in, all the way out. It's one of the few things in the world that you can know for sure. As John Fleming said, if you doubt your breath, you can doubt everything. So watch it. This is where true knowledge comes from, the mind right at the breath. Our minds are filled with so much information, but it's not necessarily knowledge. We read things, we hear things. But there are a lot of things that we read and we hear that we don't really know. And you think about all the news of 20, 30, 40 years ago that they now reveal was propaganda. The science of 30 years ago was still pretty rough. We know a lot more now than we do, but still, it, imagine how much is going to be changing in the next 10, 20 years. So if you look for knowledge out there, you're looking in the wrong place. You've got to look into the mind, where it is right here, right now, what it's doing right here, right now. That's something you can know. It's what we do that we know best. And the problem is we don't really know that too, too well, because our minds are running off someplace else. So here's your chance to gain some genuine knowledge. What is the mind doing right now? What's the breath doing right now? The knowledge that comes from alertness like this then gets combined with ardency and mindfulness. In other words, you try to do this well, and then you can know whether it's getting better or not. You experiment, you try breathing this way, breathing that way, focusing this way, focusing that way, picturing the breath to yourself in different ways. And if you look carefully, you can see that some of these things give better results than others. And some of them give consistently better results, and then some of them give good results only in certain circumstances. You've got to learn how to watch for that, too. Then all this gets stashed away in your mindfulness. You can bring it out when you need it. And that's how you arrive at something that's really genuinely true. This is practice and aims toward unbinding, freedom for the mind. And you can notice when your mind is free, when it's not free from defilement. And it gets more and more and more perceptive. Of course, there are times when the teacher has to come in and say, look, you're, you're missing something, you've got a big blind spot here or there. Then you turn around and you look, oh, something you've been ignoring all the time. But it's right in this area that true knowledge is going to come from, so spend as much time as you can right here. Be as observant as you can right here. As the Buddha said, if you want to know somebody, you have to spend time with them and be observant. If you want to know their, their purity, if you want to know their wisdom, you want to know their virtue. It takes time, and you have to be observant. And it's the same with knowing your own mind. It takes time, and you have to be observant. But this is how real knowledge is arrived at. Worthwhile knowledge is arrived at knowledge that can really make a difference in the mind. Because that's what the Buddha's teachings are all about, making a difference. We've been creating suffering for so long, now we can make a difference. We can turn the different quali qualities of the mind, the different events in the mind, into a path that leads to the end of suffering. And that's a difference that's really worth making. <laughs>